Hi guys, this is Nadia Hilker. I'm playing Magna on The Walking Dead, and you guys are listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and I'm sending you all my love. Bye! Hello, my name is Cassie McClincy. I play Lydia on The Walking Dead, and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Yeah! Hey there guys, I'm Callan McAuliffe and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, I'm Lindsley Register and I play Lara on The Walking Dead. You're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, this is Ross Marquand and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Awesome. <laughs> Survivors, welcome to episode 143 of the Walking Dead Talk Through, or should I say, Tales of the Walking Dead Talk Through. I'm Kyle, and I'm LT, and I'm Brian again. Yay! <laughs> Three in a row. Look at this. Yes, this is awesome. Yeah. No, g- glad you were able to make it for sure. Yeah. I mean, um, I just got this one in, and uh, yeah, I want I want to talk about this one. So awesome. Yeah, yeah it's a good episode. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, first, before we begin, I just wanted to like kind of uh, throw out there about our Patreon. Um, I'd like to remind you all that our Patreon subscribers are able to get early access versions of the podcast before everybody else. It's just a very basically unedited version of our recording tonight, and you get it way ahead of before the main podcast feed. And it's a great way to be able to support us. And there is more... Uh, you know, we've talked about doing more, um, like little, you know, little extra things besides just having an early release. So, um, definitely keep your eyes out for that. But if you want to join patreon.com slash walking dead, talk through for more, um, before we begin covering the tales of the walking dead season one, episode three titled D we did get some um, feedback from the last episode, which was season one, episode three titled Bla- or two titled Blair, Gina, And this came from Mike from Asheville, and he says, I've had more time to think and listen to you as um, has helped formulate my thoughts. I generally do enjoy time loop episodes. I mean, Quantum Leap was an entire series based around that concept. And I love the show. LT said it, though. What was the payoff? There was no conclusion, really. Having a time loop set in this world just feels off. If we were told up front that this series would be one-off episodes set in the world but have no connection to anything else, I could sit back and enjoy it. But they left it open if fans really liked an episode or character, they could bring them back. Make a plan and go with it. Just because we like a character doesn't mean you can write a show around them. Episode 1 was perfect for what I thought this show would be. Set in the world, Apocalypse of and the people. It was a great mix of drama and humor, but felt like Walking Dead. Yes, Renee's voicemail about episode two, she mentioned America Horror Story. That is a great example of keeping everything tied together, even the season with just stories. It feels like what you expect. Again, I'm holding out hope for the Alpha episode. After that, I expect we will keep having good and bad. We will see. I'm enjoying the watch, but my expectations have been burned. And I'm happy to have the podcast back, though. Ah, thank you, Mike. Happy to have you with us as well. And yes, Star Trek could do episodes like this. It was expected. Walking Dead didn't ease us into this. We have only known one thing from this universe. This episode was a shock for this universe. This episode was a shock. Oh... Um, no, I kind of agree, especially now after watching the Alpha episode. It was kind of... Like they, they didn't they say that it was going to be kind of story driven, character driven, but not necessarily Walking Dead. It, you know, like or well, like they, about they said they said uh, it would be in the Walking Dead universe, but they didn't right. say there were going to be Walking Dead stories. Like like um, they would expand the genre um, a yeah. bit. You know, much I would say much like. Um, the Star Trek universe has done um, with um, the the shows that they've recently brought on by you know bringing in a children's animation show, an um, an adult animation show um, back to you know 
grassroots show, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they ever do the section 31 show, et cetera, they're, they're all, um, they're all different. And, uh, I think this allows for, I think if all six episodes were just, you know, the same kind of thing, but different people, I think it would be boring. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. what, that's, that's my challenge to you, Mike, and everyone else that is, uh, thinking about this. If it's just an episode with some other people and it's just going after zombies and, you know, here, here it is right at the start of the, the apocalypse or, you know, 20 years later or whatever it is, it's still the same damn thing, stuff we've already seen. So mm -hmm. I don't mind it being different. You know, it's way, it was way different, mind you, it was way different, but, um, but I enjoyed it for that. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree. And I think that that's kind of, I like that they are looking into potentially like they did with this episode coming up that it was like, you know, that they were going to focus on a character from the main show and then doing a little bit more kind of storytelling, especially like in this one, Orange's story. But I did enjoy the fact that, you know, there was something completely different that just didn't have, like, you know, it's almost kind of like, it was more of like, oh, I don't really have to think too hard about this. It's just, it was entertaining. And, you know, it was kind of like, that's how I came off from episode two. Episode one was the same way. Although, you know, yeah, it was had still more of like Walking Dead feel to it than the time loop. Because that one definitely had some disconnects. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, I still enjoyed it. And I thought it was just a fun, different way to like, do you know, tell another story or show us something new. Well, and I'll give you half credit. It was easy to watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know how entertaining it was for me, but. <laughs> well, no, to each his own. So it just, uh, that's just, I was putting it out there as like something yep. completely different. Well, I was watching it again today. I didn't get through the whole watch, but I still found it very enjoyable. And, uh, you know, it's an episode that you can't, you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time thinking about it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just enjoy it for what it is it's a bit of a romp it's a bit of a you know it's a groundhog day or whatever and just go with it you know yep yep agreed all right well that was all that we got from comments for the last uh week's episode so let's get into this week's episode season one episode three titled d written by enchanting to pal and directed by michael e satrazimus which i know he's doing three of mm -hmm. directing mm -hmm. three of these episodes this season. Uh, description is a story of Dee's evolution. Dee must revisit her violent past in order to protect her child. All right. Well, that gets us into our ratings. Um, I actually did enjoy this episode a lot. Um, it was just, you know, it was kind of getting back to the nitty gritty. But then also, I think there's a lot about Alpha that, you know, we still don't know and would like to know more of and so this definitely kind of gave more of that <laughs> for sure so i gave it a nine marks of d on the face brooke <laughs> and i'm giving this one an eight out of ten i hear them talking in the woods mama <laughs> and um i'm gonna give it a nine and a half now what I'm specifically talking about, there's a scene um, near the end where uh, Alpha gets the, well, she's D, so we'll call her D. Um, D gets a bunch of walkers underneath a um, uh, canopy, and uh, br she brings down the canopy, and uh, the walkers are underneath it, and then she basically does the stabby stab and knocks them all out well to me it was kind of like a waffle maker so <laughs> i called it nine and a half walker waffle makers or you could also think of it as walker george foreman grills <laughs> <laughs> so anyway <laughs> nice <laughs> i oh, i enjoyed so this good. one um quite a lot uh, it it was an origin story that 
quite honestly, was quite a bit different than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. So, agreed. All right. Well, then that takes us into our listeners' ratings. Um, I'll start first with Dieta from Detroit, and she said, "I read this." Rate this episode 8 out of 10. Okay, an episode that makes sense. <laughs> and she's like crying or rolling on the floor laughing <laughs> emoji. Uh, Glenn from Toronto gives it a 6 out of 10. Death on the Nile. <laughs> Renee from Atlanta gives it an 8 out of 10. And uh, Kyle, you're not going to say this next one. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm stealing Mike. Yes. And Mike from Asheville gives an 8 out of 10. I'm going back someday, come what may to Blue Bayou, where the folks are fine and the world is mine on Blue Bayou. <laughs> oh, great job. Yes, I would have not done any well. And I knew that I was like, okay, no, I'm not doing this have. one. <laughs> Yes, I probably wouldn't even have said half the words right. <laughs> oh. You probably would have call, called it uh, Bayou or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I saw that one coming. Yeah, yeah I did no, too. I, I, I knew, I knew. All right, well, next is Alma from Sacramento. She says, this episode was way better than the last one. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. And lastly, Ivan from Minnesota says, really good episode that further expanded upon Alpha's wickedness. This episode gets a 7 out of 10. Nice. And welcome, Ivan. You joined the group uh, several months ago, but I don't think we've ever heard from you before. So definitely enjoy that you are here, and we got plenty to discuss in the future. <laughs> so thank you, Alvin. Um. All right. Well, that was all our listeners' ratings. So let's go into our awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. All right. Well, first comes from Dieta from Detroit. And she says her awesome sauce is the whole episode was pretty awesome. It had all the suspense of a good scary movie, and I loved it. Young Lydia was very hard headed and not understanding um, of the ZA world after all. Um, after watching this, I'm surprised she survived at all. Did we see Brooke in another episode with the cut on her face? Was there a significance to Alpha cutting her face? Overall, pretty good episode. And to answer that, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I had wondered that myself. I was trying to remember before the cut on her face, if she was one of the leaders of the whispers after the fact, um, one of the ones that I know Alpha killed, I think in season nine. I remember she she killed um, she killed somebody. It wasn't it wasn't the one that was like uh, what was her name Gamma? Not not Gamma. Not Gamma's sister it was somebody else. I remember she killed. And I was thinking maybe it was that person, but I don't remember that yeah. person having a big scar on her face. And I'm going to talk about Brooke later. Okay. <laughs> All right, next. Well, Glenn from Toronto says that creepy moment when D, Alpha, hushes Lydia and says, whisper. <laughs> Renee from Atlanta says, Savannah Riverboat. The whole episode, finally. And then she, is that hug emoji, hug emoji? Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, good to hear that. Uh, Mike from Asheville says the riverboat spacious and stocked could be a problem if waters get clogged with the dead, but there are a lot of waterways to go up and down. Uh, Samantha Morton, great actress, and she really has embraced this role. Her range is incredible. Scary, sad, angry. Yeah, she, she was really good yep. in this episode. Yeah. It is one of those things that like, it, it's not that I ever, you know, thought that like, oh, she's not a good actress or like, you know, this role, but like this was like really, really good. And she just knows how to play this character. It's, mm -hmm. aw it's so good. Uh, Dee's love for Lydia. She really does just want what's best for her. She didn't kill Brooke because Lydia didn't want her to, but man, did she leave her mark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And then meeting the whispers. How cool that they existed before alpha backstory. Question mark. Yes, please. Yep. And, 
we finished up with Alpha from or Alpha <laughs> Alma from Sacramento. And she said, I like the boat. These people were doomed just by how they were hanging on to pre apocalyptic partying. The only voice of reason was D, but no one listened to her about not trusting that new bartender guy. It was nice to see Alpha in a dress and with hair. The end, when she is looking at the mask that completes her transition to Alpha, was awesome, too. Yeah. And I will agree with that. I agree. All right. Well, that was all of our listeners' awesome sauce. So let's go into our own. Brian, you want to take the lead? Yeah. I mean, I mentioned it in my rating, but the waffle maker um, kind of thing I thought was ingenious. I even like said it while I was watching it. I'm like, that's ingenious. <laughs> um the i mean there are several several things that i think some, some have already been said um but i think that this was a very surprising origin story and i've got something to say about that in my what sauce but um i just didn't expect this to be a place where she would have ever gone and um you know so a riverboat um, is an interesting place for them to use, particularly a riverboat in a swamp. Um, I guess that's kind of like got a built-in, um, it's almost like easier to catch a walker in in a swamp because, right? Because it'd be difficult for them to um, traverse the swamp. So, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, some smarts there. Um I kind of liked, although it was like you, you guys had said in a way it was, it was almost like a little miniature Commonwealth, um, mm. in terms of like, it just being kind of, uh, naive, um, yeah. you know, them doing the, the, uh, you know, what do you call that? Uh, it's like, sp like the spin class or yeah, whatever. Yeah, having, I, I was, having aerobics and yeah. You know, it's like we'll have the Pilates class, and then tonight we'll dress up and have dinner. Yeah. I was trying to think what was what was the big uh, exercise craze in 2010? Zumba or something, or, or was it Roomba? Zumba or was it yeah uh, Billy something? Oh, uh, Taibo. Taibo. That's what I'm thinking. Oh of. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Taibo. <laughs> yeah, that was more that was more Zumbaing than yeah, yeah. than Taibo, but yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, um, I thought it was very interesting that Alpha did not form the Whispers. Uh, I didn't see that coming. And, uh, you know, I think it's similar to a situation we already know. Like, for example, the uh, like Negan, he didn't form the Saviors either. Um, this does not come from from the show, but at least in terms of literary, um, you know, supplements to the walking dead universe i know in in the um governor novels uh the governor did not form woodbury um he he came upon i think woodbury and originally i think it was his brother that was the head of it mm -hmm. um alpha was right about billy um and the only one that really you know saw him for what he was I thought that was good, good instincts. Um, and we see, of course, the alpha and, you know, what she was and what she would become. I think this was uh, just, we see it. We see her, you know, embrace the um, mask or at least body kind of thing. I think this is like the start of it. Mm -hmm. um, of course, she f finds that on her own before the... Uh, the whispers kind of find her, but it's also interesting that Lydia was the first one to hear the whispers and not, not alpha. So not D. Yeah. So, um, there's probably more to say, but, um, I just, I just thought this was a great episode. And, and like I say, um, I like it when something challenges me to, um, look at something in a different way than I thought. So that definitely, I can say that about this one. That's it. Okay. LT? Um, I like the fact that we got a little more depth for D slash Alpha in this episode because we saw the episode where they were at the shelter, 
when she mm-hmm. ended up uh, killing her husband because he was not willing to do what needed to be done. So we knew that she would go all in to protect Lydia, you know, that she would be the ultimate mama bear to protect her daughter. And this episode showed that she still was trying to cling to that last vestige of society, that she was still thinking that, well, maybe I could find this community and maybe we can, you know, we can find our way there and it'll be safe for Lydia and we can do, you know, have a place to live. But in the end, she ended up not being able to pull it off because of the flaw of the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, My second point is, even if you are paranoid, sometimes they really are out to get you. Um, Like Brian said, she picked up on what was going on that nobody else was really paying attention to because you have that level of comfort and naivete that having a stable non-zombie infested non-constantly confrontational place to live will give you that everybody else was fairly comfortable and so they weren't thinking that somebody was doing something nefarious and of course d's not that way she's thinking that everybody's you know out to well not necessarily out to get her but out to do something bad and of course she spots the bartender's gambit pretty easily. Um, I think as we have known through her character arc as Alpha in the main show, that Alpha is definitely a harsh mistress. That part of the reason, and I'm going to go into this a little bit more as well, but I think part of the reason that she marked Brooke is I'm betting that she was thinking that, well, you've always gotten your way because you're pretty and you can, you know, play the pretty girl and everybody will feel sorry for you. And, you know, you made stupid decisions because nobody would stand up to you and nobody and you were always pulling the, well, I am pretty kind of card where, you know, Alpha's leadership style, you know, as we know, she became leader of the Whisperers. And as Brian mentioned with the other communities, you have dominant personalities that will end up asserting themselves to take charge in that sort of situation. And so Alpha didn't become leader of the Whisperers because she was pretty. She became leader of the whispers because she was observant and ruthless and could do what needed to be done with very little emotional attachment. And it was not later until you could arguably say she was uh, lured in by, you know, I don't want to say a pretty face, but, you know, I think that. Negan was able to compromise her by playing to her ego. Um, Next, I was going to say, once again, Lydia does a Carl. Whenever there's a situation with a young kid, the kid's going to run off. Um, I was kind of amused by that last scene in the cave because Alpha has a thing for talking to heads. You know, there seems to be a thing, if you're a whisperer, that you like talking to heads. And it's my two cents on it. But since the head she was talking to or the skin mask she was talking to had blonde hair, and we know that the girl that that uh, pulled her out of the ditch that was whispering had blonde hair, it makes me think that, you know, maybe that was her skin on the pole. Um, and the very last thing is, of course, it would be remiss of me to not say it, but once again, the riverboat shows us, this is why we can't have nice things. (laughs) You can't. So true. You know that if, if you've got a community that's fairly safe, 
that's fairly secure, that has groceries and lights and a dry roof over your head, they're not going to have it long. <laughs> true. Very true. Um, I have a lot to say about the riverboat in the next section, um, but it's still our favorite, well, not our favorite, but one of our favorite tropes of the show is that whenever you get settled and you have a nice place to live, somebody's going to come along and crap all over it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Because the people that have it are not ever of a mindset that someone wants to take it away. And there's always somebody in the woods who's alive who wants to take it away from you. And, of course, you always have the zombies who just want to eat you. <laughs> yep it's pretty much a pretty like basic <laughs> like algorithm of like a plus b equals c it's just pretty like, this is much. how it works <laughs> uh, nice all right well i didn't like you guys had made a lot of points so did our listeners that i just kind of put my awesome sausages stuff that you know just kind of like different scenes because i yep. thought it was cool um, like we're like, so whenever, uh, Billy ends up kind of taking over the boat and then, you know, it was trying to find Brooke and then Brooke gets held up at gunpoint, but then D of course was like, you know, not there and he was looking for, her. but it was just that, it was just that, just that quick scene or whatever, or sh like D shoots the guy that was like, or no, actually I think it was like stabbed him or like slit his throat. That was whole, that had the gun pointed Brooke, then shot the other guy, but then she bails and in doing so, then like released the dinghy that had uh, uh, Lydia in it so that she could make her escape. And it was just like, I don't know, it was just a fun little scene. I thought, I thought it was like really, really cool. So I enjoyed that a lot. Um, and then the because we've seen the you know, the Walking Dead trope or basically the standard. Of like so, sh they got on shore and she was fighting off the walkers, and then one of them fell on top of her, and then she basically started stabbing it, and then like making all the blood and guts spill all over her, and then she called Lydia, was like, "Hey," because there was another walker that was like eating, you know, some guy from the boat that made it to shore, and then, you know, so there, you know, she's under there and she knows at this point, you know, it's like if you smell or like wipe, you know, you're covered in the walker guts that then you're going to be probably safer because they'll just ignore you. And so Lydia gets under there and then she like wipes the blood on her face and basically just tells her, be quiet, think of some other place and this and that. And it, again, it's to me, it's like, that was awesome. Cause it's like, oh, okay, cool. We're seeing that, you know, the walker invisibility cloak going on. But then it also adds the question, just like, well, then, like, how, like, how did, you know, like, how did the people figure that out? You know, we, we get to see it and different characters, different, you know, situations or different shows or this and that, you know, like on Fear, they learned it kind of fairly early, I guess, um, or Nick did. But, um, you know, it was just like, oh, gosh, I would have loved to, like, figure, like, when did D figure out that that was something that you could do? Or was that the point that she figured it out i don't I, you know i don't know it was just it's i don't know if that's an easy you know considered an easter egg or like you know like whatever but it's just fun to yeah. see and then it also adds questions to be like wait how did you figure that out well like like rick how did rick find out because he was basically the first one to do it and he did it in episode two of the, yeah um right well this is and and it just struck me that you know, we've seen the gut poncho before. This is the first time we've ever seen somebody use a walker like a tauntaun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're right. I thought of that you know, too. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad that she found somebody big enough that had enough skin that she could crawl up inside of them. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing she didn't, you know, she didn't end up with some little shrimpy walker to, <laughs> to try to crawl under. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And of course, well, and you know, you got to say it where Han Solo's quote is absolutely apropos. And I thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure walkers smell bad no matter what. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's really all I had for my awesome sauce. Other than the fact that, yes, this is a great episode. 
got a lot of more insight, still a lot more questions, but enjoyable. Um, all right, well then let's get into our weak sauce. Yo, worthless and weak. And we got two from our listeners, and I'll start with Glennis from Toronto. And she says, was this a backstory error, as in the Walking Dead episode where it covered Alpha's and Beta's meetup? Beta started to wear the face skin of his dead friend. Isn't that when the wearing of masks all started? And I would say no. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I have more to say on this. Okay. In my what sauce. And... Alma from Sacramento says, I hated how D always treated Lydia, but I do see she was right to fear for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I agree. And I don't think, um, sorry, what was her name? The Brooke. Brooke. I don't think Brooke was doing her any favors, um, kind of shielding her from the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Look what happened. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, that was all our listeners' week sauce. So that goes into ours. Um, Brian, did you have anything, or do you want to go to just wait to what? Um, I I've got stuff for what. Um, I guess the only thing I could think of is you know if they're doing this this whole um, you know trying to keep things the way that they are, how come they weren't cleaning? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> like the houseboat seemed to be kind of dirty, whatever. Not houseboat, but the riverboat seemed Ooh, to be kind of dirty. Boat. You know, I would think they would <laughs> uh, clean things up a little bit. Um, I know that's nitpicking. Uh, <laughs> let me think. What else? Um, just pretty weak strategy or pretty weak defenses on on their end. Um, so that would be one thing I would say. So. Yeah. Mm. Uh, LT, what do you have for week? Well, I'm going to complain about the boat people in what sauce. Yeah. But for week sauce, I'm going to complain about the pirates. Yep. Our, our stalwart band of intruders who tried to take over the boat. And the first one is Mike, the bartender had no OPSEC. His operational security sucked. Yeah. If he's going to be messaging his mijos on the shore, he needs to make sure he does it in a fashion so that no one sees you. Right. You can't assume that just because everybody is mostly clueless, there's not going to be someone. And in the case, it happened to be the one person who was situationally aware that found him. But you can't assume that everybody's going to just ignore when you're spending a lot of time on the aft portion of the ship by yourself. Uh, So the whole way he was communicating with the guys on the bank with the arrow or uh, however they were talking back and forth, uh, kind of a good idea, poorly carried out. Um, I will go to say that Mike, the bartender had a crap plan. Uh, (laughs) You certainly did. They could have had a much, smoother, cleaner, better take over the boat than what they did. So, you know, your operational security sucks, your planning sucks. And then, of course, when you finally carry out the plan, you know, your actual operational awareness sucks because they didn't find D and they didn't find Brooke. One of the first rules of conducting a search If you're searching a building and you think someone's inside, is you always assume that you missed somebody and that there are more people hiding inside the structure you're searching. You don't ever assume that you've got everybody. You always assume that there's somebody else hiding in the bushes or hiding in a closet or hiding in a crawl space or somewhere you didn't find them. So when they were having their little confrontation with everybody on the poop deck there, They should have had somebody paying attention to the doors. You know, you don't have everybody looking at the group that you're actually trying to deal with or that you bring sufficient numbers that you can have your security looking inward and you can have your security looking outward. Uh, As I've said before, it's a 360 degree world out there. And while you're conducting your 
you know, your interrogation of the people that you have just found and captured who are not smart enough to hide or run away, then you need to kind of be worried that there's probably more people that are going to take umbrance at you taking away their house and are going to try to fight back, which is sort of what happened. Yep. Yep. So, so uh, I get why they did it because again, you want what they have because they have resources, they have a house, they have power. And while it was a good move to have somebody to infiltrate the group, I just think that they did a crap job in trying to pull off taking it away from the people that had it. Yep. And just to think that they don't get away, as I said, the boat people get hot sauce. <laughs> nice. Yeah, eh, that's never a good plan that ever ends well. Obviously, they he screwed it up. I thought it was, and, and this is, I, I won't do it in water because this probably is a kind of a what sauce, but it just, of just kind of commenting on what you were saying though. It's like the Billy guy, I don't know, during that scene when he was basically had everybody up on the du- deck and he was like threatening them and this and that, and he goes up to Brooke. I, I got the feeling that I felt like that he like knew her. But he had only been there for three weeks. I don't know. I, I felt like it's like there was just kind of some weird exchange where he was like, I'm going to make you my girlfriend kind of thing where it's like, you know, you'll still lead and do your stuff, but I'm going to control everything. And it, I don't know. I just got this weird kind of like I read it in that way to being like, wait, but you were only there for three weeks. But you're kind of talking like you somehow knew her much more than that. So I don't know. Well, maybe that plays into the whole uh, D's pretty girl scenario scenario yeah uh, true it's like well you might you might have been you know a failed leader but you're pretty so i'm gonna keep you yeah yeah that's that's a good point um i'm only really kind of add a week as just kind of more of like week of expectation because i know that we've seen already before from the main show of basically D and Lydia with uh, Frank, the dad back in the basement. That was like 23 days later, like after the fall mm-hmm. that I kind of thought was weak that like there wasn't just some kind of a quick, you know, like not flashback, but some kind of quick succession to be like, how did she even get on this boat? Cause we know that it was like from what Brooke said, it was like she had been on that boat for like over a year But it was just like, how did she get from when she killed her husband to then gets on this boat? Because it it kind of, it's just like, oh, okay. Like, she just happened to find these people and just gets on a boat. And this is just where the story starts. I don't know. It's part that that's the part that um, gives me a half deduction because I don't really understand how we get from that uh, beta origin story and, you know, killing her husband to this mm-hmm. you know? yeah and i i make it and that's that i'll just add it saying it is my week because they just basically were like oh no we're just not going to do that <laughs> so it's yeah. weak that they wouldn't do it <laughs> yeah i agree um, yeah definitely agree all right well that was it for all of our weak sauces let's get into our what sauce what 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 uh we get got two from our listeners and i'll start with mike from Asheville, and he said okay This dawned on me, and I'll be honest, I can't remember and also did a quick look, but not too much. There was an episode of Alpha meeting Beta for the first time when she uh, was with the Whispers at the time, or was that a backstory on the main show? If I had time, I would go find that episode and watch it. Or did Tails ignore the main show and create their own origin? I just can't remember her wearing a mask or not in that episode. Uh, I'm going to say that it was after this. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I agree. Um, but yeah, so after so, this, because yeah, Alpha meeting Beta. Alpha, alpha meeting Beta is after this. Yeah, for sure. Okay, when so so that when we see Alpha kill her husband, was that in the same episode as when Alpha meets Beta? No, I don't believe so. Okay. No, no. Okay, I have to go back and. Watch uh, season nine again, I guess. Yeah, I think that that episode was kind of, uh, I want to say it was like a little bit more of a Lydia 
like episode of like how she you know how it all started or something like that because i mean it it was titled omega but i only watched that very first part because i wanted to see if it was the same actress or right basically good one mike though um um next up is renee from atlanta she said seriously you guys were doing yoga while the dead were all around you (laughs) facepalm facepalm you should have been doing some fight training instead of parties and yoga shock face shock face seriously (laughs) true (laughs) i'm not gonna argue with that no because yeah it was silly Oh, all right. Well, that was all of our listeners' what sauces. So let's go into ours. Um, do you want LT to go start first? He can start first, sure. All right, LT, what did you have? Okay. Well, since we talked about the pirates, now let's talk about the boat people, shall we? Um, first of all, I'm going to agree with Renee. You know, while you're doing, and I was saying Pilates, but it's just because that to me right now and my point in life has more of a negative connotation than yoga but take that for what you will um but yes you're doing your yoga and you're having your dinner parties in the evening and you're obviously not thinking about what's going on outside because the boat really didn't have a shit hit the fan plan (laughs) you know i didn't see you know they didn't have uh any any sort of defensive measures they really didn't have anybody walking around you know on watch they were just going about their day doing their thing and you know these knuckleheads from the shore were just able to you know boat right up and jump on board and do their thing um so the side note to that is brooke was too naive is that she's trying to make a sense of normalcy for everybody and totally ignoring the fact that it's no longer a normal world. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. had there been some other circumstance, then maybe her approach to things would have worked. But considering that you have, you know, animated corpses who want to eat you and otherwise live people who want to take away what you have. It just seems rather silly to me that you're building this lovely community up to give everybody a sense of this pre-apocalypse without doing any planning to hold on to it. (laughs) Right. And the note that goes with the first was that obviously nobody ever thought of a repel borders plan. You know, there were no, uh, nets to secure the the gangways around the ship. There was no pokey things up above. You know, they didn't have controlled access to the stairwells. They were just, you know, blithely living their lives, cruising around on this boat. And let's be editorial for a moment, shall we? That since it was a paddle wheel steamboat or a paddle wheel boat, uh, they typically have low draft and a low freeboard. So that means that they're very easy to clamber up onto. That if you think about, for those of you who watched Fear and remembered when uh, Strand had his boat, the only way to really access that sort of yacht is off of the dive platform at the rear. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only Mm -hmm. way to come up on the sides or on the nose is if you had some sort of rope, some sort of ladder or something to hook over the rail so that you could climb up because they sit much higher out of the water. So in that scenario, it would be easier to defend from somebody who just scoots up on their John boat and leaps onto the back deck because you have more of a controlled access you're kind of keeping it down to one area and if somebody tries to come up the side all you have to do is have a broomstick and whack them across the knuckles or whack them across the the grape and they're gonna you know potentially fall back into the water (laughs) Uh, the steamboat because it's much lower to the water presents a much more inviting target for you to leap aboard and 
if you and I think one of the guys was in a wetsuit. So if you take the whole Navy SEAL approach, you can just swim right up to it, gr- you know, grab the edge of the deck and just hoist yourself right in because that's the nature of the way steamboats are designed. You know, they're designed to go into shallower waters and for the most part they were designed to ca- carry cargo and people. So you want to make it easy for people to get on and off. So that's the way that works. So concurrently, if you're trying to keep people off your boat, you should have done something on the lower deck to keep them off. And uh, as I said, it just was, we're just living our lives, doing our yoga, doing our thing, having our parties, and we're not paying any attention to anybody on the outside world. And of course, since she was the leader, I'm going to just drop that square onto the shoulders of Brooke because she was in charge. So as things go, if you're in charge and things go bad, it's your fault. Um, I think my other, I I put it in my what sauce. It's not really whaty that much, but as we've already said, I'm pretty sure that based on the people we saw, D didn't take over the whispers. Yeah, you know, or she didn't start the whispers, but D definitely took over the whispers. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I would say it fits in my mind with the whole beta story that she found beta later. I, I mean, if I'm wrong, it just seems to make more sense to me that that's when she hooked up with him and it would make more sense to me that if they were trying to pretend they were walkers, his whole thing about wearing his dead buddy's face would have fit more easily into that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, it, it does. And it doesn't though. Cause really? I, I don't know. I, I tend to think that, um, why would, if this happened before she met beta, why would she have been separated from the whisperers? So, so essentially what this means is she was with the whisperers and then, I don't know, went back to them with beta and then took it over. You know, that's what mm-hmm. I'm thinking that means. So I don't yeah. know if it, I don't know if it makes sense. Um, I would love to hear from the producers where, where this is on the timeline, but it, I don't know. It it kind of I do agree with Glennis in that it could be um something, you know, a canon violation or which is not something you usually hear about in the Walking Dead universe, but um uh, a canon violation or a retcon, you know. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't I I'm not sure. This could exist there, this could exist before. I tend to think it's before, but I don't really, I'd have to go back and watch a few episodes from that season to know for sure. Yeah. If it does. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I you know, agree. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, like what you were saying, it, that's one of my watts was kind of like, I just, I didn't understand the whole, like, like assuming or not assuming, but but basically from the information that I I do know that like when Beta or not Beta, um, D and Lydia were with her husband twenty three days later to being like this is a year after how d- depending on how she actually made it to this boat and this and that, so it's been over a year ish, you know, and like I don't understand like why there wasn't that need to oh we need to have something in place to protect you know ourselves because we're basically on a boat in the swamp and then it's like there was like oh but we're turning the lights on and basically flashing all this stuff out to the world that like oh look at me I'm on a boat that is like has live people on it that I, I just I didn't understand that um, from why Brooke was like that's what she was choosing to do other than the fact like you said it was like sh- she was naive or she's just like you know stupid because it's like um, you know of course in the end you know they obviously it all falls apart but um, it just she made this comment with her I guess her boyfriend um, uh, whatever his name was I think it was 
uh, Noland or something like that that we see at the very, very beginning. And they're like, oh, I have to wear a suit now. Let's go to the party, blah, blah, blah. But she like turns to him whenever Mr. Uh, Langston, the older guy, was di- you know disappeared, and they basically were just like, "Oh, yeah, well, people, it- it's like there's no worth like looking for him. He's he's gone." But then they said, she says, she's like, "We take care of our things," and he answers back, he's like, "And our things take care of us." And I thought that was very interesting because it's just like it's a very worldly like concept you know, like an old world, maybe kind of thinking. And of course that way of thinking of them, like, Oh no, 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 we're still holding on to like, you know, our Pilates classes and like having birthday parties and this and that, whenever there's a whole world of like dead things and other people trying that would kill you in an instant that you're, I don't know, doing that. Um, that I, I don't know. I just, it, it just made me make think of like, okay, well obviously this is going to not end well, and it kind of reminded me of, yeah, this is like kind of what we're seeing with Pamela Milton and the Commonwealth, you know, it's like yep. they're trying to like c- carry on this old world thing. And it's like, well, but this just, that doesn't really work. <laughs> you can't go back to the like, oh, law and order when there is no law and order. <laughs> like it just, it doesn't work in this, in this world. Right. Um, um, I also thought, um, oh, I was just, I had it on the tip of my th- uh, tongue that it was like, um, Oh, it came up before I was going to talk about about the lights and all that stuff. Um, ah, I just lost my thought. I had it and it just like disappeared and it was kind of like along the same line. So I'll well have to bring it up I, if I remember. I had stuff to say about the lights. So all right, well maybe that might remind me what I was just thinking because I thought it was a good point. Well, then that was all I had. So take it away, Brian. Oh, okay. Well, about the lights, um, turning the lights on was dumb. Um, you know, we've seen this before. Of course, this was one of the uh, critically stupid things we saw Madison do. And mm-hmm. we saw this again in fear uh, with um, with what um, Strand was doing on the tower. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if we've ever seen any examples of this on the other shows or not. But. But um, the point being is that, you know, turning the lights on, um, fog or not, it's just, it's a good way to bring the dead to you. Um, So I think Alpha was right in turning it off, turning them off. And uh, um, Brooke was very naive in turning them back on. So I didn't buy the reasoning there so yes there's structure but in a in a chaotic world that has very little structure um i thought she was going to cut off brooke's face so that's that's what i was actually expect uh expecting but uh if i'm not mistaken the person that she greets is the person or that greets her is the person whose face she ends up with right right yeah Mm mm-hmm I didn't catch her name. Oh, um, Hera. Hera. Okay. Yep. And see, I thought, I thought she was going to scout Brooke the way she was holding her head. And when she moved the knife around, I said, she's going to scalp her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I just made a, um, I was referring to a Phil Collins, uh, song billy don't you lose that number (laughs) (laughs) billy you lost your number anyway um so billy was like you said uh before he had very poor planning to to take over the place and uh i i really don't know what he was expecting to do you know it yeah didn't make a lot of sense to me and of course you know everything turns into chaos because obviously he had no plan. They didn't have any plan at all. They were just going in there trying to take it over with um, brute force, which probably would have worked had not D been there. So it, it really probably would have worked even if it was poorly planned. Um, but uh, with Alpha knowing, you know, being, like you said, situationally aware, um, that allowed her to, you know, 
And then the last thing, it was our, it's already been said, but it should have had defense training instead of Zumba. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that <laughs> might help to run away. Um, you know, so you get your cardio going, you know, that, that would certainly help in the zombie apocalypse, but, uh, not as much as being able to kill. So, well, it just, but then that's the other, like what that goes on to that though. It's like, so if they've been in this for over a year or, and plus some that is like, have they never been attacked before? Have they never been like hiding from other people? And you it know, that like, it, that's why, but that's why they're in the swamp. I think that, I think that the logic was, well, if we go somewhere that's uninhabited or not largely inhabited by live people, then we'll be safe because the walkers can't get to us because of the water. And we're, you know, in, we're in the middle of, you know, hog knuckle bayou somewhere and that there's no live people around so that we're safe. So they were lulled into a sense of complacency. Yeah, and then that actually brings me to what like I was trying to remember before. It was like she did mention whenever D was asking her at the beginning and being like, Is it is that a good idea about having the lights on? She did say it's like, oh, it's like, well, our scout like our scouts or whoever, like they've already like, you know, checked into all of this and there hasn't seen anything like, you know, for a long time. So it's like it's fine. And then also mentioning the fact that like there was a depot that was like 40 clicks away or whatever that they were going to re that they heard of that they're going to refuel on. So it's like, okay, wait, so, you know, like you have people scouting for danger and then you also know about like a possible depots that you're going to get more supplies from, which would you think that would be basically other people might already have, or you're having to like somehow sneak in there. That's to me, it was like where like, uh, then there was kind of like a disconnect of like, okay, well, you're doing all the stuff to and being like, oh no, no, we're trying to bring back the, you know, keep everybody comfortable, you know, and living the old ways. But then yet you were also trying to like scout ahead and make sure things were safe, right? And so and, it, so, and why wouldn't you think they were unfriendly people at Swampy Joe's bait and tackle shop when you pull <laughs> in to get more gas and you know? More sure, food. it wasn't bills. Maybe, yeah, well, hey, maybe Billy is Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. That's a good question. Although they're probably not near Texas. <laughs> it's the Louisiana branch. Of that actually brings me to another point. So when we see Alpha in that episode, when she was in the shelter and she meets Beta, wasn't she in Baltimore? I want to say she was, I, I seem to remember that she was, um, like there might've been a poster with, uh, what was his name? Like with, uh, yeah. Is it half moon? Is that what he called himself? Anyway. Um, yeah, I thought it was Baltimore. So yes, she was, she, so how, where's the, where are there bayous around Baltimore? <laughs> right. Which she obviously is like, they traveled or did something. Yeah. She'd have to shoot. She would have had to go down to, would it be Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, right? There's right. no other states that have what you call bayous. Not like that. Not for sure. Not that I can think of. Um, Florida may have have some on the. Uh, not like that. No. Yeah, that was very, very Louisiana, like right. Alabama, or, or just like that southern area. Right. Right. Of course, would be that way. So, right. For right. sure. Anyways. Yeah. So anyway, that that's my take on it is that uh, uh, I was wondering how she got there. And uh, I would agree. But, you know, that could also mm -hmm. fit with the migration of the whisperers if if uh, she met Beta later. But it does. I don't know. It doesn't jive for me, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. It's it could be. Well, I I can think of as many reasons why it isn't than why it is. So I don't know. Right, and the other side of it is they've played so fast and loose with distance anyway. <laughs> right. That, right. Well, and I mean, if you want to make the argument that you could have a 
similar degree of swampiness in coastal North Carolina and coastal Virginia. I know that the Great Dismal Swamp is similarly swampy. The problem is the riverboat is just too endemic to the Mississippi Delta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too. We really don't have a lot of paddle boats in my side of the world. So it still goes back to thinking Louisiana. And I agree with you. That is a quite a bit of real estate between, you know, Baton Rouge and Baltimore. Yeah. But again, you know, who's to say that Alpha didn't fall asleep in the back of a truck. <laughs> and we know, well, we, d- we know the whispers migrate. migrate. And that's yeah, exactly what I was so, about to say. So I mean that's that's an argument for um her meeting beta after the fact. But I just don't understand if that's the case, how how she got separated from the whisperers. And wouldn't she say to Beta, Well, I got a you know, I, I've got a group for you and you know, let's go mm-hmm. back and you know, meet up with them. You you've you've got new fans to uh listen to your to, to your new songs of grunting and and <laughs> maybe maybe these were the the beta version of the whispers and she ended up killing all of them and she said you know this is a good idea but i think we need to i think we need better people yeah version two we need yeah. version two mm-hmm. yeah maybe maybe that's totally possible like i said the only question is and it would it'd be one of those things just like you said Okay, producers, this is your chance. Give us a call. Give us an yeah. explanation. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's www.talkthroughmedia.com. <laughs> Leave us a note. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's it's possible if we go looking that this may have been explained somewhere on, um, you know, if if we find something, we should post it on the on the Facebook group. Yep. Yeah. No, I yeah. totally agree. Anyway, that, that's it for my what sauce. All right. Well, if that is all that we have, then that leads us into our sad and awe sauce. Aww. And we got two. And the first one came from Renee from Atlanta. She says, Alpha was a pretty decent mother, but she just couldn't hold on to reality because of everything she seemed to have with uh, through before the ZA. Um, she said she killed her dad because she had two, I guess a shrug emoji, shrug emoji. Um, that alone lets you know she has some psychological issues. I think she was just a Debbie Downer as well before the ZA. I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, she she reminds me a little bit of Carol in the very beginning. So, like, we don't see any of that other than that episode when she's, like, hiding with her husband, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I could tell you, like, get that. It's like D is basically a version of Carol. And then this, like, look what she, you know, what would happen if Carol had any kind of a, you know, different experience than she did. And she wasn't with Rick or, like, you know, whatever. Could she totally be an alpha? I totally would say yes. Um. (laughs) D said that she killed, didn't she say that she killed her father when she was nine or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Carol never did that. So, you know, that could have warped D's consciousness so that um, D turned out the way that she did and Carol turned out the way that she did. You know, but, no, true. But it's just, I mean, they're, they're not, they're, they're not too far. D was able to pretend. D was able to protect her daughter and Carol wasn't. Well, that's true. Yep. True. No, but you're but you're right. It's like that is kind of a little bit of like a an extra thing, trauma, whatever. I just I would say also like kind of just equivalating to being like, you know, what the Carol, you know, being in the abused, you know, abusive relationship and then like her dealing with that for so long until she finally could get free of that. Yep. But yeah, I, I would totally agree. It's like D probably had a little bit extra, <laughs> a little extra like trauma to go on top of, you know, then add the ZA on top of it. And she had her daughter she was trying to protect. Yep. All right, next. 
Uh, next is Mike from Asheville, and he goes, why do I feel bad for D? She's crazy, but at her core, truly loves Lydia. Seeing what happens in this episode makes her future even more heartbreaking. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. Agree. Oh, it, it, it was. Yeah, I mean, you, and Samantha Morton's acting and, like, embracing this character. And, you know, it's like, that's the... I mean, I put this kind of part of, like, a little bit of my sad sauce, too. But it is. It, it makes you feel... It's like, you know, really, D, even though that we know her from our like from the main show she really did like want to protect her daughter Mm -hmm. you know she really i think loved her you know and just seeing that it was like in this kind of twisted way and like you know she did things and made decisions and did it and like tried to like hide it from her but basically brings her into all this like very violent world and like you know making these like really adult decisions yep. <laughs> doing that you know that da- damage to her yeah but it's like yeah i'm like you know she that's you know rick did that with carl you know that was the whole point you know rick was going to do anything kill anybody or whatever to protect his son and you know that was like you know he made decisions and this and that so you could say D was doing exactly the same thing. <laughs> it's just sad. Lydia had to, <laughs> but she, she's at this point at least has come out of it a little bit. I mean, you, you can say Lydia outlived her mother. So, oh yeah, true. Know, in the end, she, she survived. She learned, you know, she learned how to survive. So, you know, yep. Got to at least give her credit for that. Yep, and you. C- and and you can almost you can almost say that this episode uh, sort of tempers your opinion of Alpha just a little bit because you know knowing all the stuff that happened you know we saw her at her penultimate form you know mm-hmm. so that's true all right well that was all our listeners um, sad and awesome so that leads us into our own. Um, I kind of already kind of made comments already about what I was going to give for my sad and Asa. So Brian or LT, do you guys yeah, have any? I don't, I don't really have anything. I LT? actually do. I actually okay. do. And I, I carried my sad sauce as D giving Brooke the mark. And I said, I was going to talk about it a little bit and I'm going to, um, one of the things that certain cultures have is they have a sort of a history of disfiguring people. Uh, it's especially true of the women folk. And it was generally for infidelity that there were, uh, I the think. Scarlet the, letter. <laughs> well, it's more the, the cut the tip of the, of their nose off. Right. That there were several, uh, Indian tribes on the plains that that was their their punishment for somebody that was caught that was unfaithful or a you know a woman that transgressed against the the tribe is they'd cut the end of their nose off apparently that's a big thing in uh the Indian subcontinent as well, because as I was reading up on this, um, I, you know, I picked up that they apparently in some some Afghan areas that's a thing. Um, I remember it from some. I want to say it might have been the outlaw Josie Wales, but there was some Western I remember watching. They talked about the smutty nose. That basically, if you captured a woman from another another tribal group, they would, you know, cut their nose. So you would have a visible mark that showed that they were, you know, not one of the cool people. They were one of the uncool people. So it's she cut her face because then she didn't have the pretty girl card to, to play anymore. But it also sort of marked her as far as, you know, she did something so that she's going to have, you know, this big freaking, you know, scar on her face. Yeah. 
So uh, she no longer necessarily had the the pretty girl currency. And also, you know, if you want to get metaphysical about it, you could say that this was, you know, this the mark was her punishment for failing her people, which I could kind of see an alpha sort of logic in that, that, you know, you did bad by your people, so now you're going to wear this mark so that people will know when they see you that you did something. Yeah, she did say to her, didn't she, something about, like, now this is, like, my mark or something to remind you of yeah. how you failed me or failed my girl. Yeah, so yeah this is like, something to remind you of how you failed failed me. So that failed still, everybody. <laughs> yeah, and that still goes into the whole thing of uh, now she has not – well, of course, she's going to have some psychological scars because of that, because you could always make the argument that – you know, pretty people are used to being pretty and they're used to getting away with things because they're pretty. And it would be more of a dig on her psyche that she was, you know, she was now flawed. Mm, that's a tr- good point. True. But all of that, uh, all of that still <laughs> is sad. So, yeah. All right. All right. Well, if that's all our sad and aw sauces, let's get into our feedback. We can talk about it. We're done talking. Time to listen. And we have some written feedback from Renee, but she also left us a voicemail. And yes, Renee, you got it in time, so don't worry. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Um, all right. So I will play that now. Hi guys, this is Renee from Fairburn. I have been meaning to make this voicemail all day. I really hope I get it in in time. It's 8.51 and I know it's supposed to be in, I think, by 6.30 or 7. If not, you guys can play it um, next week. But um, yeah, this episode, you know, I left, I finally was able to leave my feedback, my awesome sauce, my sad, I forgot to do a sad sauce. Oh my God. I hope y'all haven't got it off. Oh my God. I don't know how I forgot to do a sad sauce. Um, Lydia, oh my goodness. She was so sad. I mean, I don't think the apple was um, mean to her. I think that that was just her way of you know, trying to take care of her or showing her love. She just, like I said on the Facebook post, she just seemed like she was born a Debbie Diner or some things happened in her life to make her Debbie Diner. She just seemed like she was the type that was never happy, was always complaining, was always moping before the ZA. She seemed like that. That's how she was. Um, so of course, once the apocalypse hit, you know, of course she really was crazy, but you know, she kept calling her baby and she was holding on to her and she was going to, um, you know, looked like she was when she took the knife out before the whispers started whispering to her, she was going to, you know, take her and Lydia's life, you know, so they wouldn't have to go through that. So I do feel like the apple was, you know, a OK, mom, she just didn't. She wasn't love like that. She wasn't. You know how some people some people can, you know, they were in a bad situation as kids. They'll learn from that and they won't allow their kids to go with that, but then on, go through that. But then on the other hand, some people would treat their kids the same way they was treated as kids, knowing that they were not happy and knowing they didn't like it and knowing they didn't feel love. So they would still treat their kids, you know, the same way instead of doing the opposite. If I know I didn't like it, I'm going to make sure that I do, you know, treat my child differently, love on my child, let my child know that I love them. So I think the alpha, because she said that she killed her father, that maybe, you know, was, of course, it was something going on there. And she just didn't know how to love. And that was her way of showing love. And... It was just really sad because I think she just she was already on the edge. And once the apocalypse happened, it just, you know, took her over. And um, but overall, the episode itself was really, really, really good. It was The Walking Dead. It was what I wanted from The Walking Dead franchise. Uh, You know, zombies, um, mystery, not corny, laughing, crazy crap. So I really was satisfied um, this night. I I, I I was really satisfied um, with this episode. But I have seen on different podcasts that people were saying, some people were saying they didn't like it. And I even believe that Glennis said that she didn't care for it. She liked the other two better. So, you know, it's always going to be everybody has a difference of opinions. You know, everybody's going to feel differently about things. But this is what I want from The Walking Dead. 
So yeah, I hope we get I hope you guys get this in in time. Yeah. So I did not do my sad sauce. So that would be my sad sauce. Just Appa and you know her not being able to show love. Just that's sad. It's really sad to you know to think about a child that was not loved, that was not you know showed love, was not told they were loved, was not you know kissed or hugged or rubbed on. She just seemed like she didn't. Well, I don't know because she was hugging her. And she was, you know, rubbing on her and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to take. I don't know if she, cause she, I wouldn't say that she was mean to her, but she was just trying to make her tough, I believe. And maybe that's, you know, that's what happened to her. That's how her daddy made her, you know, that's, that was his way of showing love, making her tough, but she did show affection to her. So, I'm not sure, but it was just sad. Their relationship was sad and how Lydia wanted to stay with the other lady um, because I guess she was girly and whatever. <laughs> the guy, the bartender guy said that Alpha looked like a, a wet raccoon or some type of raccoon or something. She said, I thought that was funny because she really did. It's like Alpha, seriously. But okay, talk to you guys later. Bye. Uh, thank you, Renee, as always, for the sure. voicemail. I'm glad that you enjoyed this one a lot more than the first two. Yeah, <laughs> I thought she would, but because it was definitely up there with the basically kind of the expectations that a lot, yep. know a lot of our other listeners were. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you made some like good points um, just about Alpha, but like, yeah, I think there's we already kind of talked about that. You know, it was just like. Obviously, she killed her father. There's a lot more going on. But, you know, at the same time, it's like it was whether or not how she was doing it. Yeah, like she at her core, if you, want to, if you want to put it that way, she wanted to protect Lydia from everything and just wanted her to survive and wanted to keep her safe and was basically looking around at everybody else and then had the sense to really know that, like, you know, this isn't wrong. Like you, you're, you're putting us in danger by turning lights on and acting all, you know, naive and the world out there. And she saw it. (laughs) So, yeah. Oh, good one, Renee. Or thank you very much. Um, okay. She did put in some, um, uh, written feedback that we got in time. Um, She said, this felt like The Walking Dead, and maybe this is how some people who have their heads in the clouds would act, but I definitely don't think I would be one of those types of people. Agreed. (laughs) Makes me question that thing where it's like, where we've grown up, like, I know this is fantasy. I know this is, or, you know, like, this is, like, stories. This is, like, you know, this is what we, like, watch for entertainment. But you think about, like... I think it was even like Independence Day or something where it's like, you know, aliens come to invade and this and that. And I'm like, okay, we've all grown up on like alien invasions or like zombie apocalypse that if it actually ever happened, (laughs) I would think that we'd be a little bit more prepared. Maybe. (laughs) To be like, wait, okay, no, I already saw this. Shoot for the head. You know, it's like, (laughs) I mean, yeah, there's uh, society. We're a big, you know. Yeah, but there's still lots and lots of people that in up sitting on their roofs after a hurricane because they're like, nah, I can ride it out. Yeah, that's true. There's <laughs> all this Darwinism. <laughs> uh, uh, and then she goes on and says, backstabbing and treachery right out of the gate is also how I would expect some people to be. I feel however you were before the ZA is how you will be afterwards. Not to say some people can't change, but for the most part, if you were a jackass before, then hey, <laughs> shrug, shrug. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. That answered my other question. <clears throat> All right. Thank you so much, Renee. All right. Next. And we got some more feedback from Dieta from Detroit. She said, so this is the backstory of Alpha, and I really enjoyed it. So at the end, they showed her talking to someone Was that the original Alpha? If so, what happened to her and how did Alpha become the new Alpha? I have so many questions now. And that's rolling on the floor laughing. I need answers. (laughs) And I think we kind of speculated as to what those answers are. She, you know, took it over. Um, Yeah. Well, we we saw that whole thing about the challenge bit with... Wasn't it with Beta and Gamma at some point? The do you want to 
challenge me to take over do you think you you know that whole thing so yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i figure true. i figure she just said you know i'm gonna be in charge now <laughs> i don't think you're the leader <laughs> That's a good. You are not doing good. it the way that we need to to survive. <laughs> anyway, Mike from Asheville is next. He says this episode is what I wanted from the show. The feel of the walk, feel of the Walking Dead plus Alpha is a great character to explore. Loved it, and even next episode looks interesting. Hmm. It does. It doesn't look like it involves any past characters, but. Uh, it, yeah. it does look interesting. And yep. It is available on AMC Plus, but I haven't watched it yet. Yep. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, no, and we know that they this is the only episode that we were going to get that was going to have an original character, unfortunately. I know there was some talk about them doing a governor episode, but I guess that didn't pan out. Maybe uh pan out. David Morrissey wasn't available or Yeah, you know. that's who knows. I mean but there's definitely going to be a season two, so the, well, there is <laughs> maybe there is going to be a season two. Well, I mean, I there hasn't been an announced, but I'm I'm pretty sure they're going to be because the showrunner was like at Comic Con was basically saying it's like oh we've we've written like 35 different stories that like oh yeah he was way too excited for this to be a one and done yeah. So it's I don't see them not doing this, and this would be a perfect thing to fit in the summer if it's if they're going to keep it to like a brief six episodes or, yep. or you know whatever. So fills in gaps. Who, who were you talking about? Gimple was too excited, or the other? Exactly. No, Gimple's Gimple's never excited about anything. It was the other guy, Channing Powell. I thought Channing Powell was a female. No, it, yeah, sh- that she is a the showrunner is female, okay. but. The if it was from the Talking Dead like special that was uh, Cetrazemus. Oh, okay, okay, that makes. He sense. was very excited. Yeah, yeah, he was very excited, and so yeah, like he directed three of the episodes of this yep. season. He's probably not so excited about uh, fear anymore. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they have one more season. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully this will be the end. Uh, all right. Well, next, uh, thank you, Mike. Um, next comes from Ivan from Minnesota, and he says, "Love the boat setting, and what she did to Brooke was brutal. Also, that ending was wow. Makes me want to want a short series on her rise to power." Yes, and and answer and answer how she met Beta. Right. I'll look at that. We'll look at that. I think this may be another new person, Teresa from Florida. Uh, she p- commented in fear a couple times. Okay, well, I'm just saying it didn't it didn't ring any bells. So, <laughs> uh, and she says, "I loved it. I'm glad they explained this happened after she killed her hubby. Otherwise, they would have some splaining to do." LOL. Samantha Morton could act out the instructions on how to open a water bottle, and I would watch. Love her. Thanks, guys. Have a super Walking Dead day. <laughs> thanks Teresa yeah Samantha Morton amazing job always yeah so now I'm thinking about it I guess the is it the the origin story about her killing her husband was in season 9 I want to say is that right the, yes season the 9 Omega, the Omega episode yep. season 9 episode 10 and then I don't remember the name of the episode but it would be in season 10 and it would be that one with alpha and beta. Um, it was probably, it might've been episode two. I don't know for sure, but yeah, yeah, it was something, it was something early on in the, ep- in the season. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well now we go to Glennis from Toronto. She has quite a few things in her feedback. She says, strangely or funny enough, I didn't enjoy this episode as much as the previous two. It was just okay. The whole whisper storyline in TWD just got a bit tiring, but I suppose that was right after Rick Grimes disappearing. And from my perspective, the TWD show hasn't been up to snuff ever since. I mean, I don't know. It, it got good. Um, but 
I mean, I, I do agree that I have missed Rick Grimes ever since he's been gone. So, yep. <laughs> um, I did, however, like the Who Done It mystery story, and D Alpha was very sharp to not trust the barman and immediately know what he was up to, signaling the cronies, his cronies on the shore. However, D Alpha is so blunt and downright nasty with people and doesn't mince words that in telling Brooke about her suspicions, Brooke, because she doesn't like D, immediately dismissed D's suspicions. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm hmm. Those people on the boat all seemed to treat D like the hired help and didn't see her as an equal. That was their first and last mistake. <laughs> I would, I would agree with that. Like, I don't know if I would put it that way as much as I would say they were kind of treating her like a different class of people. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, hired help, I guess it's the same, similar way to say it. Yeah. I noticed both D Alpha and Carol both threatened their, with her knife. D with Brooke and Carol with Pete in Alexandria. Hmm. D Alpha was going to kill Lydia and then herself after giving Brooke a visual reminder of the error of her ways in trying to take away her daughter. So that group appearing out of nowhere stopped D's Alpha's murder suicide from going ahead. Yeah, change hmm. her life. Yep. Mm -hmm. So D alpha was, must be, and just so you know, I'm not doing this. It's Glennis putting in the bracket alpha. So I'm trying to represent that in my tonal change. So D <laughs> alpha <laughs> must be overpowered. All of that group to end up with the woman's leader head on a spike. That would have been interesting to see and not just assumed. Yeah. I, I think we all agree with that. Um, I don't know if we'll ever see that, but um, right. I definitely could <laughs> see there being a story. Um, yeah, you know the rise of the rise of Alpha or something. As I said in the week sauce, I'm not sure that that was when the mask wearing started, and it was really after meeting Beta. But we now know whose face Alpha was wearing. Reading mm -hmm. this back, the rating might be more of a seven out of ten. Oh, okay, so we have an an adjusted rating, seven out of ten. What'd she give it first? <laughs> six, or six, six I half? believe. Yes. Yeah, she gave it originally six. So. Yep. Yep. All right, that's it for Glennis. Thank you so much, Glennis, for all your your good insights as usual. Yeah, I would just like to add though. It's like I don't know if it's necessarily like yeah, they looked at her as the hired help, but maybe that they looked down on her because she didn't assimilate right she'd been there over a year yeah. she'd been there over a year and even brooke called her out like hey it's like you know you're not enjoying this you're not trying to like basically live life and blah, she blah, didn't blah. wear her pretty dress and she didn't put on her yoga pants to do her pilates yeah in the right right yeah. so i think that was more of probably what that was all probably more about yeah <laughs> so that was my reading she was too busy wearing her Jason Voorhees overalls. <laughs> well, and then even Brooke even like said whenever at the beginning that, you know, Alf or D, you know, had that dress on. And she's like, oh, you look nice, like D, D in that dress or whatever. And D is kind of like, uh, like it was like basically a slim pickings. And then she made a comment saying, it's like, oh, would you be feel, you know, feel better in a suit? And it was just like, that's. And then she even like D even like responded like what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. You know, it was kind of like there already was that tension there, and she was kind of already like, you know, oh, I was just joking, not just like trying to make fun of you or like call you like, oh, you're different, like you, yeah, and you be a man or something. But that also went into the whole Brooke with that mean pretty girl vibe. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> like the whole popular cheerleader thing. Uh, well, they don't survive in the apocalypse, do they? No. Uh, all right. Well, do you all have anything else to add? Other than I thought it was a really unexpectedly good. Well, I expected this to be a good episode, but it just went a different direction than I was expecting. 
Mm-hmm. And I like it when episodes do that. So, yep. Oh, I totally agree. I'm now, mind you, fear has done that a few times, but not so positively. That's true. <laughs> Let's do not speak of the. <laughs> So when it when that it does right something <laughs> different than I was expecting, and it does that that thing well, well, <laughs> yes, that's that's the the second part of it. If it does it well, which the, I think that this one did, um, I'm going to like it, and I did, so I liked it. And I was going to say, from my standpoint, well, it was better than last week. But see, that's <laughs> that's the point that I would bring up is that for me and for Kyle, I think um, last week was executed well i mean it didn't there were there were issues with it being in this universe having that kind of story that we're never going to get answered but i don't think you necessarily have to have answers for that i thought the execution of the story was good last week i thought the execution of this story was also good very different story I'm going to say it. Well, I I know you liked it, but I didn't like it. I know you didn't like it. (laughs) I'm not talking about you, you, Brian. I'm talking about me. (laughs) Yes. And we can, we can disagree. Um, We can. That's part of the, that's part of the fun of doing three of us. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Well, we can't wait till next week as that one looks interesting as well. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, it does. All right. If there's nothing else, then let's get into our news, rating, and info. There's a couple weird stories on the news. Ah, uh, well, as I expected, the ratings were up. Not a ton, but still up. <laughs> uh, Tales of the Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 3 got a .10 in the 1849 with 430,000 viewers, which is less viewers than it did last week, but I guess, you know, in the scheme of things, that's how it all fell into it. But the interesting part, it ranked 45 in the top 150 original cable te- telecasts, so that means we actually mm-hmm. got more ratings just the na- normal 18 to 20, 49. So the 25 to 54 got a .15 and the 50 plus got a .25. Um, so compared to last week's episode, season one, episode two, which got a 0.07 with in the 1849 with 448,000 viewers, and then that ranked 57 in the 150 original cable telecasts. That's so really less viewers. Interesting. It's really mm-hmm. interesting why the the number is is lower, you know, because everything else points to it being higher. Well, that's the same argument that I've made on several occasions when the ranking number is higher and it actually has a lower overall viewership unless it's doing some kind of jiggery pokery with how many you have in a particular demographic. Or there could be another explanation like maybe some people watched it soon sooner on uh, AMC right. Plus because it was available. Or watched it yeah. on AMC Plus, which I did, even though I watched it after Sunday night. Um, so, I mean, that could explain it as well. Or maybe the fogies came out for Samantha Morton where they didn't come out for Parker Posey. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, it depends well, just, on like what their pool of like what they use yeah. is like, oh, here's the total viewership. And so maybe a lot of people weren't watching TV. Well, everybody apparently is watching House of Dragons. So <laughs> like, cause well, that does air on the yeah. same time. Everybody but us. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, Cause I, I would say I though, HBO, I don't get the channel. So, and since we don't yeah. know, I still think a 0.25 with a 50 plus, I would be curious if we, if we actually got the breakdown to see if it was, you know, if there was a spike there. Tell me last right. week? Yeah, off of, from last week. Yeah, I, I wondered that too, but we we don't know. I mean, because, maybe for some reason. Well, th- I, I think about it like this, that when we knew that it was going to be different stories, maybe the old fans turned out because it was alpha as opposed that they're going – you know, as much as I want to see Terry Crews or as much as I want to see, you know, the episode 
with the tanker that maybe Alpha was the draw. So yeah. And the other thing who knows. You, the other thing you can think of as well is that um, you know if I'm not mistaken it it replayed did it replay at ten at eleven at midnight or was no. there another program after it? They were in the midst of Rocky movies. Oh. Okay, so, so they I, so the it didn't it didn't replay until like one o'clock ish. Oh really? Okay. Mm, yeah. Really? Because huh. okay. they had I think they had Rocky Two on before it, then they had uh Tails, and then Rocky Three. Okay. I think was three the one with Drago? No, that's four. Okay, so it was three, then four. Excuse okay. me. Because it was yeah, three was with was, uh, with was with Mister T, and then four was with Drago. Okay. So yeah, it was Clubber Lang and Clubber then Drago. Lang. Yeah, huh. well, Mister T, he he's aging well. That's one thing I've noticed. He still, he still <laughs> looks pretty close to what he looked like forty years ago. <laughs> he's dro- yeah. and and the difference is he may have dropped a few pounds, but he still looks good. Yeah. Yeah. So so he's still he's still pitying fools right and left. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it like uh you want know, something else that's gonna make you feel old? Wasn't it like didn't Pee Wee Herman just turn like seventy or something? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I think so. I was just like, well, I remember watching Pee Wee's Playhouse and then finding out, like, all of a sudden, like, oh, he just turned seventy years old. Yes, like, and my childhood. The fact, the fact that Lawrence Fishburne was was the cowboy. You are correct, <laughs> oh, sir. Gosh, he, that's he, right. <laughs> he he was born wow. August twenty seventh, nineteen fifty two. He is seventy years old. He just turned Mecca Lecca High, Mecca Heine Ho. Mecca Heine Ho. <laughs> God, I want to watch that every morning. Or it was Saturday morning when it came out. Well, since, uh, you, since you brought it up, that was one thing I did I, I did to one of my coworkers. I had the theme song to Pee Wee's Playhouse, and I had the, I, oh, yeah. I slipped that in as their Windows startup music. <laughs> so, awesome. the, so the computer would go dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Coming down to Pee Wee's Playhouse. That's awesome. Oh my God. And all the young people were like, What are you listening to? What the hell is that? <laughs> oh gosh. That was so good, though. Um, all right. Well, let's move on. Um, Talking Dead. Obviously, there was no Talking Dead. I don't know. I haven't heard anything if we're actually going nope. to get one on se- season six or episode six. Um, but. One thing that did happen was the parrots. So they finally Ka-ka, came out. Ka-ka. Yes. After all this time. So guess what? Walking Dead actually is in the parrots. Um, so last week, uh, the, um, August 20th to the 26th, uh, Walking Dead actually ranked 10 with 41.8 times the demand of, of the average. What's the demand of the? Demand of an average show. Demand of the average show. Um, but then the week before, which was August 13th to the 19th, Walking Dead actually was in um, eighth place um, with 39.9 times the view of an average show. So Walking Dead actually did break the parrots, which was kind of like, I don't think we've ever, like, any of a non Walking Dead show, like, Fear never ranks. That I've seen at least, no, you know, and it's only it's only ever Walking Dead. Yeah, it's only yeah. ever the yes. Walking Dead. Yeah. So I mean, this is if they're basically lumping it all together, which that's what I'm assuming they're doing. That it's like yeah, I don't know about that because look at look at what we're seeing on this one for uh, August twentieth. We we see, for example, that Game of Thrones is the number one program with 108.7 times the demand of an average show. I'm mm-hmm. shaking my head as I say the demand of an average show, uh, listeners. <laughs> uh, anyway, but there is a separate entry at number seven for House of the Dragon. So they, and I find that interesting that they are uh, charting separately, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, similarly, Breaking Bad is at number three with 73 times the demand of an average show. And Better Call Saul. It's, you know, prequel, it 
is just under that, but at number five. Ooh, SpongeBob is at number four. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's uh, uh, anyway, Better Call Saul is at number five with 69.4 times. So anyway, it's just interesting. So I don't think that they're lumping fear and, you know, tales with The Walking Dead. But then again, I don't know how they would separate them. Right. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, and House yeah. of the Dragon, you could definitely see it. House of the Dragon, Breaking Bad, and Better Call Saul. There's definitely a way to separate them. But if you say fear the walking dead, the walking dead is going to come in, in that search term, right? right. Tales right. of the walking dead is going to come in that search term. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe they don't. Yeah. Well, and I would just say, if you look at the previous week to, to the week of the 20th to the 26th, my explanation would be, with the new series coming out, everybody was binging the crap out of the old shows in preparation. So that surge of binge watching from the fan base is what propelled the old shows up higher because that would have been more traffic watching more episodes. Mm, yeah. No, I, yeah. I, it's just it yeah. was nice to actually see that actually on pairs because usually when oh, it's yeah. on... Because I mean, we saw it. We saw it uh, with the middle, the middle section of the main show that mm -hmm. it started charting, and yeah. I think it's nice to see it leaping back up there. Because uh, yeah, yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe this is showing that Tails is getting some traction that um, the other spinoff didn't get. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah well, we'll we'll find out or also i mean that's the thing i don't know exactly how yeah obviously the parrots work but also we also you know know that they are heavily hitting the airways with promos for part three of oh yeah season 11 of the walking dead so there's definitely probably a lot more excitement of like when i mean we're only a couple months away so it's like you know and you could also actually, probably you could also away. figure that yeah you could also figure that with all the buzz they had at Comic Con you know mm -hmm. maybe people were going back and watching section one and section two again getting prepped for three yep so overall good at least to see some of that charting and this this episode actually being a higher rating um, so outside of the ratings the only news that i had was the fact that they announced that jeffrey dean morgan has been cast in the boys season four which i'm super excited about <laughs> but there's there's no details or nothing like that or like what character this and that is just fact that he did i think he did post it on twitter and they all like on like some of the cast from um the boys on their instagrams or whatever did like comment about it. So Negan is joining the boys. I can't wait to find out if I was going to say the comedian joins the boys. Yeah. Cause you know, that was his character in the watchman. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Right, right, right. And then the thought of the thought of Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Carl Urban chewing scenes together. Mm -hmm. I may have to break down and watch it. <laughs> it's really kind of no, I, <laughs> it takes it's curious though the timing of this with the um was it the isle of the walking dead is that what it's called yeah which i think is called dead island now yeah they're oh, they re called dead island oh okay they're re yeah they, they had a rebranding interesting i guess that should have that should have been in news but <laughs> yeah they came out something that's like oh now it's known as the dead island or whatever all right. Well, if anybody else doesn't have any other news to add, um, nope. then LT, you want to tell people how to interact with us? I shall. Uh, we want to encourage you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's at Walking Dead TTM. To submit your theories and feedback, most people post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Walking Dead TTM. You can send us email. That's walkingdead at talkthroughmedia.com. You can also use our feedback form on the webpage. That's at talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback. If you'd like to leave us voicemail, 
Remember, you can call 216-232-6146. And all of our new episodes are on YouTube. Just search for Talk Through Media and remember to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when we have new videos. Those videos go out first before the podcast does. And to support us, like and review the Talk Through Media Facebook page. You can find that at facebook.com slash talkthroughmedia. And as always, the best way you can support us is in our Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash walkingdeadtalkthrough. And we would like to thank our Patreon supporters, Mike Rollo, Scott Kerr, Renee Murray, Dieta Patterson, that guy over there, Lawrence Todd, <laughs> Hello. and this guy, me, Kyle McAdams. Remember that Mike, Scott, Dieta, and Renee will be getting an early episode of a version of the episode this week. Uh, you can subscribe to us in Apple Podcasts or your podcast client of choice. And while you're there, give us a rating or review. You can also leave us a review at podchaser.com. There you can actually rate individual episodes or the whole podcast. And as always, remember to share our posts on Facebook and Twitter when we post them or tell a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to get us new listeners. All right. Well, Brian, what else can be listened to on our network? Well, um, well, right now, the three of us are going through and... uh, Covering Star Trek Lower Decks. We have Yay. recorded the premiere, season premiere episode. Uh, it should be out hopefully by the time you guys hear this, or if not, soon after. Um, the We've also finally finished our, all of our episodes of uh, Strange New Worlds talk through. Um, at the time that we're recording this, the first eight are out. Um, all 10 have been recorded. Uh, episode nine would have been out today. However, there were some some issues, some technical issues with it that I haven't completely um, solved. So I have to go back and try to fix them. But uh, that's a due to circumstances beyond our control. Yeah, this is, and this is a different circumstance beyond our control. The uh, thing that makes us sound good off phonic wasn't working. So, and that's like the one stage that's going to, going to stay in our processes is, you know, I'm going to use off phonic as the last step and it's not working. So WTF. So anyway, so we have that. Um, So there's lots of Star Trek content coming. Um, We also have coming um after lower decks probably prodigy Mm -hmm. so um kim and and james will be back on that and uh after this is done we will be segueing into the walking dead talk through covering the walking dead (laughs) and uh also of course we have james and and kim um continuing to do the um star trek was it rebinge DS nine um, podcast? So that's uh, that's big as well. So every week, that's it. So next week on Tales of the Walking Dead will be season one, episode four, Amy and Doctor Everett. It was written by Amadou Garba and directed by Haifa Al Mansour. The description from AMC Plus. Amy tries to convince Dr. Everett that people need to take back the land from the dead. So, that'll be next time. Tales of the Walking Dead talk through. So until then, I'm LT. And I'm Brian. (laughs) And I'm Kyle. (laughs) And this is the Walking Dead talk through. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.